We are done with the RTX 1590 and saw how capable and also power hungry the card is and now it's time for this, the RTX 5080. It's positioned right below the flagship 5090 and aims to deliver high performance gaming at a more approachable price point. Now let's talk about the design first. The RTX 5080 Founders Edition that we have here is essentially the same design as the 5090 Founders Edition. The design philosophy is the same and also the same subtle white LED around the middle section when it is running and the cooler is also the same efficient dual fan blow through thermal solution. Just like what we've mentioned in the RTX 5090 review, the cooler has excellent thermal performance and also a very low noise level. We also have the new longer and more flexible 12 volt high power cable but instead of using a 4 by 8 pin PCIe connector we now have only three. So we'll talk about the power consumption later. Now it's time for the performance. We'll split the performance into two parts, one raster and another ray tracing without frame generation first. And everything is timestamped below so you can skip to whichever section that you want to see the most. We also had to redo the RTX 5090 test because we did have a new press driver and notice substantially better performance in titles that were underperforming previously. So this is going to be kind of like an update to the RTX 5090 review as well. In raster performance, we can see that the new RTX 5080 outperforming both the 4080 and 4080 Super in most scenarios, though not by much. In 1080p, which I think we should skip for this resolution in the future because it's going to be heavily CPU bound. I mean, you won't be gaming at 1080p if you have an RTX 5080. In 1440p resolution, we can see that the RTX comes close to the 4090 in certain games but the difference in GPU capability is still very obvious in heavier titles like Alan Wake 2 and also Cyberpunk 2077. Against the RTX 4080 and 4080 Super though, the 5080 may be performing better at times but it's still not having a big lead over its predecessors. As a quick mention, this is also where we can see that thanks to the new driver, the RTX 5090 is outperforming the 4090 by even bigger margin. In 4K resolution, we can see that the RTX 5080 outperforms both the 4080 and 4080 Super by an even larger margin. It seems like the RTX 5080 shines the most in 4K gaming this time. Once again, as a quick mention, the RTX 5090 also got an even bigger boost thanks to the new driver. Now for ray tracing performance, I'm going to just show you all of the charts for 1080p as we are going to encounter more or less the same CPU bound bottleneck. While it seems like the RTX 5080 is outperforming both the 4080 and 4080 Super by a slight margin and is very close to the 4090, it doesn't actually matter that much here because 1080p gaming, no one's gonna buy this card to play games at 1080p. Scaling up to 1440p, we can see similar patterns here and the performance gain on the 5090 is more significant now and we can see it performing closer to the 4090 this time minus Hogwarts Legacy and Alan Wake 2. It's looking good for the RTX 5080 so far. Moving on to 4K resolution, we are hoping that the RTX 5080 to outperform the 4090 uh, but that's not gonna happen anytime soon according to our data. That aside, looking at the RTX 5080 in isolation, the performance of this card is very impressive for this resolution. Another quick mention here, the RTX 5090 is now outperforming the 4090 by a huge margin. While the RTX 5080 is clearly a 4K gaming capable GPU, tackling graphically demanding games like Hogwarts Legacy, Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk 2077 with ultra-detailed textures and heavy ray tracing, the RTX 5080 does struggle a bit. This is where NVIDIA's frame generation technology comes into play. The RTX 40 series introduced frame generation with DLSS 3 and 3.5, but the new 50 series introduces DLSS 4 with even better frame generation, and it now has a new frame generation multiplier, providing a noticeable advantage in maintaining games at a higher frame rate and smoother gameplay in demanding scenarios. A standout feature for DLSS 4 is the ability to offer frame generation multipliers like 3 times and 4 times, significantly enhancing performance over what DLSS 3 and 3.5 could offer. This time, we managed to take a look at even more titles that support this new feature, so it's good to know that game developers are actively working in adopting all of these new NVIDIA features.
While not all games have this in-game option for these settings, you can head into the NVIDIA app to adjust them if the game is supported. The app also lets you check the compatibility for your titles, ensuring that you get the most out of your 5080. Despite some skepticism around the AI-generated frames, we find that it's actually worth the trade-off. The feature is not perfect as it will still have artifacts, but it is way less than before. It's also quite difficult to pinpoint artifacts unless we are scrutinizing every single frame, especially at higher resolution and demanding settings like ray tracing on ultra preset and path tracing enabled on demanding titles like Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk 2077, you can ensure smoothness while playing those games right now. In terms of power draw, the RTX 5080 is close to what the 4080 and 4080 Super has to offer. Under heavy loads and synthetic benchmarks and games like Cyberpunk 2077, the power consumption ranges between 330 to 390 watts, which is way lower compared to the 5090. As for thermals, I'd say that the 5080 performs admirably. During synthetic benchmarks, the GPU temperature is peaked at around 75.6 degrees Celsius, and the memory junction is at 82 degrees Celsius. Gaming sessions yielded a lower temperature, around 72 for the GPU and 80 for the memory junction. This temperature is surprisingly low for a high-end GPU like the 5080. The RTX 5080 is a solid entry in NVIDIA's 50 series lineup, offering impressive performance and new features. That said, the performance is more nuanced. If we consider just the wrestler performance, then the RTX 5080 is more like a beefed up version of the 4080 Super, which might not make people excited for the new generation. When we do enable DLSS 4 though, which is exclusive to the new Blackwell GPU architecture, then the RTX 5080 will be getting a much bigger performance boost. The enhanced frame generation features provide a much more smoother experience, especially in demanding titles. While the generated frames aren't exactly perfect and may introduce some minor artifacts, they are barely noticeable during gameplay. So, should you buy the RTX 5080? At $999, US it's a worthwhile upgrade if you are coming from anything older than the RTX 40 series cards. But if you are already using the 4080 or 4080 Super, then we recommend you to maybe not upgrade. If you have extra money, then go for it. But the difference is not that huge. So what do you think about the RTX 5080? Do let us know down in the comment section below. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next video.